Ed Barnhart, and I'm chair of the Joint Police Advisory Council. Thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we have a brief agenda, uh, but would certainly open it up to public conversation as well. Uh, we'll start with the agenda. Uh, I'd appreciate if you could please raise your digital hand in Zoom so that you can be recognized to speak. When you address the group for the first time, please state your name and position as it relates to JPAC. And comments and questions by both JPAC and the public will be limited to three minutes. Again, my name is Chad Barnhart, uh, and I work in the Dean of Students Office at Ohio University, uh, and I'm pleased to start this meeting of JPAC. Um, in those documents that I said I was looking for, the, we had talked previously about um, Jackie, do you have the agenda in front of you? Uh, I can call it up. We, we, the, the first thing on the agenda, see the agenda that I got was old. The first thing on the agenda is to talk about um, forums, community forums. Sure. Uh, I know that previously Chief Pyle was working on a community forum. Is it really related to the history class? Um, and I think that was set to go in late July, if I recall correctly. Right. Perhaps at the community center. Uh, we certainly want to have a public forum, and uh, I was to meet with the staff and event services today, but that meeting was canceled, so we're going to meet next week. There's still some question as to when and how the university will open publicly, but we'd hope to explore two spots on campus, one being the Scripps Amphitheater. that kind of has a natural tiered setting and a natural stage. Um, wait, wait, hold it, hold it, Chad. Are you, you're talking about the class that we're offering to the police? Uh, or no, forum. A public open forum. Public open forum. Okay, I just wanted to get it straight. Okay, go ahead. So it's to in a public open forum. Uh, we're going to try, we hope to host sometime in July, uh, and perhaps at the Scripps Amphitheater. It has that natural tier by Alden Library uh, that may be suitable for a publicly, socially distanced um, open forum on campus. The other venue could be uh, the West Portico of Memorial Auditorium. Uh, but again, those dates will be forthcoming and perhaps in mid to late July, the date of which I don't have at this time, I need to make, meet with that staff to move forward. Any other comments related to that? Have we thought about how we're going to advertise that? I think we would work, certainly work with the city and try to work through social media. Um, we uh, perhaps could enlist the help of um, President Nellis and Mayor Patterson as well to push that more broadly. So there's some things that we'd have to work out related to the technology of that and, you know, how many microphones does event services have and kind of in the weeds kind of stuff, but we'll work through that part. Uh, but hopefully we'll be able to do it in, in July. I'm hopeful. Any questions or comments related to that? Okay. Uh, agenda item number two is update on course development for APD and OUPD's history of racism in America. Jack, I know you are working closely with other faculty. Yeah, um, and you know we're meeting very regularly about it. Um, it's set to begin at the end of July. We're going to have a ninety-minute class every other week <clears throat> for five. five we're uh, basically five separate classes, ninety minutes each. Um, and we um, are, we will definitely um, do the class again for the public. Um, we're going to do it through the Ping Center is the plan. Um, probably not until the fall, though. Um, and the Ping Center wants to record it and put it on their YouTube channel and also make the class available to um, especially do it for um, uh, teachers, um, grade school teachers through through high school. Um, so. We will present it to the public as well as uh, the course that we'll actually present over over those five separate sessions with with um, both police departments. Just to clarify, the Ping Center or the Community Center? Okay, two separate things because I'm 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 acknowledging both that we're going to do it at the Community Center with the police beginning in um, 
beginning in July and then working our way every other week for five sessions. But we also, you know, I, there, there was some questions at the last meeting about whether or not we could make the course public. So we would, we will also do that through the ping center, which will be completely separate from, do, from doing the course with the police. Any comments related to that? Many questions. Isn't, so are you, so could we just like, I guess, so the ping center is the recreation center, correct? It is. Would we be able to just live stream this or do this via zoom or have those kind of sessions that way? No, no. And this is, this was, this was the decision of the instructors. We are, we are, um, we are only going to offer the offer. We're going to offer it to the public later, but we, we want to make sure that um, it's, it's done only with the police. Um, and, you know, we, and it's because we're OU professors and we're accustomed to having privacy in our classrooms. Uh, we, you know, the provost can't even show up in our classroom without our express permission. And, um, you know, we just feel strongly that no students are, you know, need, should be observed in a classroom that is attended for them only. So no, it will not be live stream. Oh, so oh. there's two different sessions. You're I just want to clarify. There's two different sessions. One session is going to be for the police at the community center or at Athens something. The second group is for the public at Ping. It'll be through the Ping Center, which is one one of us is arranging that. In fact, the Ping Center asked if if they could host it. So yes. Yes, exactly right. And that's probably going to become later in, come later in the fall. Any other questions about that particular topic? Are there any questions from the public? Ellie, is there a question that you might have? I can see your name in the participant chat. Not at this time. Are you talking about me or somebody else? Well, there's an Ellie Hamrick. So I was just asking Ellie, since she's with us, if she would like to have any questions for us. Ellie and Allie. Sorry about that. I'll be more clear the next time. Um, okay. There was an agenda item uh, to update, which was uh, uh, related to a statement, but I'm, I don't know that we have enough people to approve that statement or disapprove that statement. By my count, we have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine members. Yeah, I, I count 10, but still, well, that is that is a little over half. <laughs> Chad, could we talk a little bit about the process of revision and things that would have led to the final statement you sent out today or what was perceived to be the final statement today? Sure, I'm open to that conversation. Oh, I'm, I just wanted to know, so what, what had been changed from the revisions Jackie made to that final one we got sent? I think at like 2.33. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Um, I looked over and I didn't, I didn't feel like I saw a lot of differences. Uh, Maria um, advocated for the addition of both Black and African American in the statement. Can, and can I ask, uh, Chad and I were talking about that before. I... I don't understand the distinction between black and African American. And I, I think it. Yeah, I think, I think especially like with teaching the course, um, this upcoming year, it's going to be important to talk about the differences. Maria is currently, she currently at oral surgery, so she's on the call, but she'll, she can type out in the chat as well, her response, cause she's a little bit more nuanced in it, but essentially they're, they're two different complete identities. Um, I think she sent an article we both looked up in terms of why people might use black and why people might use African American. I know for a fact some black communities do not see themselves as African American because they do not have 
um, ties directly to Africa. They came from the Caribbean or other places as well. And so they go by black, but it is a very hot button issue in the community. And so, which is why we made the distinction between the two of them. I think she, she's, she probably typed something that's a little bit, a little bit more concise than what I was saying. Um, but I think that it's important to make sure that we're addressing both because it's impacting both communities, but it's also important for us to know that um, we're nuanced in these discussions and these terms for diversity and inclusion. I guess I need more of an explanation because anyone who's black has their origins there in Africa, um, mm -hmm. ancestrally speaking. So I just, to, well, me, to me, it looks like a, a, a typographical error. I think also that we need to listen to these communities who are asking for this distinction. As, as far as I know, no one on this committee is black or African-American and it's been heavily contested in DNI and in online narrative. And I think, I, and I understand your um, desire for brevity and certain things and cutting things and making it very concise, but I think this is an emotional, passionate, powerful issue for Americans all over, whether that be Black um, folks, African-American, other people of color. And by honing it down and taking out words like that, I think, I think we can add those in. I think it's important. Other questions related to the statement? Uh, where and when will, will the statement be published once it's successfully voted on? We were talking about doing that in local, you know, the Post, the New Political, the A News, the Messenger, those venues. I think we had some, a few other venues that we talked about the last time that we met, but those were primarily to the focused on the Athens community. And also papers or venues that students would have access to as well. Other questions about the statement? Questions about my email related to the statement? Really quickly, this is Andrew. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you, for the, for the purpose of the public discussion so that people that are viewing this at home or um, as a participant uh, understand what the, what the statement is and the purpose, just a really, really brief synopsis for the viewing public? Sure. Um, sure. Uh, JPAC decided uh, in our previous meeting that we uh, would draft a statement uh, related to protests and Black Lives Matter and the, particularly the murder of uh, George Floyd and others uh, related to policing. Um, we, it talks about systemic racism that has plagued the U.S. since its inception. Uh, the Black and African-American men and women have been targets of white racism for centuries. And brutal acts of violence are part of our country's history. I'm just reading now from the statement as you picked up. This is a time not just for grief, but for action. JPEG's charge is to develop and maintain productive lines of communication. Uh, we've done such things as uh, small group discussions, campus community safety walks, coffee with a cop. We talked about how we've encouraged the history of racism class we talked about. We talked about efforts to increase transparency uh, from the police departments uh, and sharing policies. Uh, and we continue community forums to allow constituents, diverse constituencies um, to engage with the police. And then we talk about briefly our charter and how to engage in public meetings. Uh, we had decided that as a group, well, I should say I as chair had decided that as a group, we would take a vote on this. Uh, we got some feedback. And so I don't, I don't recall number one, a time that we had voted on a particular instance. 
Um, but I don't know that we have a majority to take a vote. Well, we do have 10 people and if there are 19 on the committee, we have a majority, but still we might not have a majority unless yeah. it's unanimous. <laughs> Um, we don't have enough people. We don't have enough. We won't have enough votes. Andrew Powers, Chief Powers. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Are you considered a member of JPAC? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I think um, both the chiefs are considered permanent members because obviously if we're not members, then we're not here to 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 hear the feedback and and to uh to hear what people have to say i do, i don't believe i mean i don't recall a vote ever being taken on anything either um but uh i i don't i don't know that we would vote i don't know that i would feel uh, that I would. It's appropriate for us to vote on i i feel as the jpac sort of speaks for itself in some respects and it shouldn't be the police chiefs that are voting on how that should look Mary Catherine, you have a question. Yes, thank you. Just um, one tiny change I would like to propose to the statement as I'm reading through the, fi the final, final version. If we can change, um, if people would agree to change pe um, men and women to individuals or to people to make sure that we're inclusive of non-binary um, trans folks as well um, who have suffered from violence in similar fashions, I think that would be good. And also there's some things happening in the chat, which I don't know if everybody has access to the chat. I know Jackie said that she can't see it sometimes. Um, but I, I wonder, I, I feel as though we really, I would feel bad. Like I, there, the time, like I wish we could have gotten this out way earlier, but we, just with everything that was been happening, but I feel like we really do need more members of JPAC here to vote and to hear concerns because I didn't even think a lot of people chimed in on the statement. Um, it has predominantly been, I feel like me, Jackie, Maria, and Karen. And I want to make sure that everybody's having a chance to really look at this um, because it's a really important statement and we're already behind. And I want to make sure that it's good and what people actually believe in and will support. I don't believe we have enough people. I've seen some conversation in the chat. And, and the problem, too, that I, I see when, you know, unless people are present for a discussion, I'm not sure that, that an email vote, you know, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, you know, if people feel like they can't talk about what, object, what their objections might be or what additions they want to make. Um, and, and I do feel like this is, I feel like we're way behind the time anyway to have produced this statement. Um, because I do agree with you, Chad, that this is, this is really timely and, and to delay any more is frustrating. So I, I, I'm not sure. It's not that I disagree with you, Mary Catherine, at all. Um, I'm, just, I'm just not sure how we, how we can deal with this. Toby has a question. Uh, excuse me. I agree with putting it off a little bit. I, I have not had, uh, with my teaching schedule, which is pretty jam-packed this summer, any time to look at this, any meaningful time. I'd also like to look at some of the research on some of these issues, and I would also like someone from the Athens Police Department to be here. I think both police departments should be represented whenever we do uh, vote or however we're going to proceed. That was it. Thanks, Toby. Other comments related to that, to the statement? Amanda. I see her. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I have horrible service. I can hear you. I'm Amanda Graham. I'm the representative for classified employees at Ohio University. I also work for the Division of Diversity and Inclusion, and I 
strongly agree with um, Mary Catherine and Maria on multiple areas. I had made some edits to the letter, but it was at the very last final hour. Um, and I would appreciate the the chance to send them out to everyone if, if that's what we decide on. Um, but in addition, while I do believe this does need more editing, we, we do, it is very time sensitive. Um, we are well past the time that it should have went out. So while we need to make edits, we need to do it on a, on a short time frame. Thanks, Amanda. Um, we're meeting at a pretty rapid pace and I don't know. My fear is that um, I don't know how much longer this should be delayed because I agree that it's timely. I think that we can come up with a more general statement at a later date, but it would not be as timely as the mention of uh, Mr. Floyd and as it relates to that particular issue. I think there are other issues that the statement speaks about that we can push and what our mission is, but I'm concerned about a time frame. Uh, are, yeah. Huh. Hey, so I, I would certainly appreciate the opportunity to read Amanda's uh, thoughts and edits. Um, but I, I do agree with um, the time issues. So I, an idea maybe would be that um, we, we need to ha agree to have a vote via email rather, because um, with difficulties with getting everyone scheduled in a Zoom call um, and then limitations on availability of the Zoom account, um, perhaps, you know, if, if people, anyone who wants to read and chime in, uh, plan like any, any thoughts or revisions or edits need to be sent out um, within, I see Amanda's put maybe 24 hours and then everyone who, who wants to, to vote, like vote needs to be in by the end of the day, Friday or something like that. Um, if we just set a, a specific time limit on it and um, I, that, um, just because I don't know when, when we would have more of us together. Right. My fear is that as re revisions continue to roll in, we're going to get past 24 hours and we're not going to come to a consensus on a final statement to approve. And, and let me say, and I'm speaking here strictly as an academic who, who, who has co-authored stuff many a time. Um, you can't write stuff the way you're the way we're all proposing. It just uh, it just uh, it's not going to work by email. We're if we and and I'm not saying that you know ed, more edits edits aren't welcome. Everyone should have a voice. Uh, I, I'm simply saying that we're not going to be able to come up with a statement and a consensus doing it in this manner. It just it just won't work. Which which leads me to to think maybe we shouldn't do a statement at all. Is is all I'm is all I'm saying. I will say as the recipient of edits <laughs> that the 24 hour time frame, and I appreciate everybody's edits and the back and forth. It's, I don't know that a schedule would allow for a 24 hour time frame because I think, and I think we've heard other folks say like that people haven't had time or people weren't able to make time because of work, because of childcare, whatever those things are. And I'm just fearful that perhaps we have to mothball our statement. I think parts of it are really good. And I think parts of it we can share with the public. And I don't know if that is a more timely release, unfortunately at a later time when perhaps students are back, uh, I still think we can do public forums sometime, hopefully this summer. There's a, um, what I really value about this group is there are people with very strong opinions and differing opinions. And I am concerned that we are not all going to come to some consensus related to the statement.
would someone like to chime in or does anybody have any additional thoughts? I'm, I'm going to pop in quick um, before Andrew. Um, I'm Mary Catherine Tran. Sorry, I didn't say this before. Underrepresented constituents at the university. I agree with Maria made a point in the chat talking about maybe working this summer to make a general statement about um, our support of the Black Lives Matter movement and police brutality and um, talking about what we're going to do the start of the academic year in terms of like the launching of the class in, J in July and talking how that went, talking about future opportunities for engagement. But I think we're all, I think everybody's right. Like we were too late, not too late to say something, obviously, but I think that every day we pass more and more people, there's more and more in, um, at things happening. Right. And so I think maybe if we can come up with a cohesive thing, we work on this summer, make it a goal to finish by, August one to have ready for the by the time folks come back to campus and stuff started again. That might be that might be a good angle for us to go with. So we don't look like we were just dragging our feet because we we weren't trying to. We're trying to get twenty or twenty five people together, right? Um, but I would like. I think that that might be a really good way to go about this. Comfortable with that. Oh my gosh, they're stickers. I'd like to say, instead of uh, a statement, why not think of it uh, a little bit differently? Why not think of it as, um, as an invitation? So when I read the statement, I think there's a lot of good information. In there. However, it seems to me like it is this body um, uh, airing out as opposed to... In. And I would view... Uh, the purpose, at least in part, is when I look at the JPAC charter and its charge, is to um, represent or to bring in outside voices. Uh, maybe instead of a, a overall general, let's say it's a general statement, but instead of it being the statement, it's an invitation to uh, allow people to, uh, to to provide their voice into it here. And um, JPAC being the um, I don't know if intermediary is the right thing, but being a sounding board and being a place where uh, people that have concerns, people that have questions, people that have uh, may not have a, a, a good outlet to create bridges and connections, which is really part of the purpose of this, that we're really a listening source as opposed to a, a, a source that's creating statements and, um, and pushing out uh, agenda items. I, I hope I'm making a, some level of sense that, um, you know, really we could invite uh, concerned members of the public to um, to share their concerns with JPAC specifically, and JPAC as a community body can uh, can look at those concerns and see if there's trends, if there's specific things that are can be focused toward our local police because uh, really our area of uh, of ability to make changes on the most local level. And that's kind of the purpose here. So if we have uh, that opportunity to, to do that and to be that intermediary and to build a bridge between uh, police and community, which is the purpose, then I, I see that as being a statement, I guess. I like your use of the word invitation. Sure. Any more conversation related to the statement and or are people comfortable with that? That's something that we could release in late August or early September. Yeah, I, I really like Andrew's idea. Um, and it, it would give us the opportunity too to let more people in the community know about JPAC, that maybe we should look at it that way, that this is, this is an opportunity for us to make ourselves better known and to under, and to make people understand that that they have a voice here, I, I really like that idea. Seems as though the chat agrees. Maria and Mary Catherine agree. Okay, I'm going to consider this issue closed unless anyone else has any comments related to this. <laughs> Any general conversation? Any? Oh my goodness! I am very sorry that my mic has been on. You probably have all been hearing my child. Very sorry. <laughs> Not to worry. I think it's a part of these calls. 
Okay. Any general discussion? Allie has a question. Um, in terms of being a liaison with the community, um, I had a question from a community member about local uh, police department's use of force policies. Where can somebody in our community go or who can they speak to to, to find out kind of what the um, what policies and the rules are locally for our, for our PD? Um, those policies are public records. Anybody can ask at any time. We can produce those policies and, and in fact have um, in response to certainly for my department, I can't speak for APD, but I imagine it's similar. Uh, they've had similar requests here recently and, and produced documents as well. Um, we're in the process uh, of um, kind of formulating the best way to share information um, relative particularly to some of the calls for reform and some of the recommendations like eight can't wait and other things like that that have been made um, and um, for o OUPD uh, we, we're going to create a website that that kind of lays all of this out in a way that makes sense. Part of the challenge with police policies is if you're not a police officer and you don't understand how our policies and procedures work, it can be very confusing just to get a big dump of documents that don't contextualize anything. Um, I think my plan for OUPD is to develop a website that connects some of these recommendations, some of these calls for reform with policies that we have in place to show how they interact. Um, and also to show how our policies interact within themselves, for example, um, how, uh, how our use of force policy connects to other policies that we have. So um, that's something that, that is a project for this summer. I obviously would like to get it out sooner rather than later, but um, at the same time, obviously a lot going on that we're trying to uh, deal with and we're in the middle of moving as well, which is, is uh, creating another challenge for policies. Um, but anyway, that's the long answer to your short question. Ellie, yeah. Ellie has a question. Are we able to unmute Ellie to ask a question? Hi, Ellie. What, can, what question do you have or what comment do you have for us? You might be frozen, Ellie. Yeah, we can't hear you. Scott, can you help? Can you can you somehow help us hear her? She's gonna type her question in. We'll wait for it. Um while Ellie is typing her question, Maria says there was a post on exposing Ohio University Twitter page about a recent APD officer posting about a Nazi leader. Has this come to the attention of Chief Pyle and are there any actions being taken? I don't know that anybody's here from APD to respond to that, Maria. Um, Scott says she's live. Okay, Ellie, the question from Ellie says, does anyone know if APD has mutual aid agreements with other police departments? I know about Dayton and I'm wondering if there are others. I cannot answer the question for all of APD's mutual aid agreements. I can say that, it, that APD has a mutual aid agreement with the Ohio University Police Department, um, obviously, and um, believe that, that uh, I believe we have a countywide mutual aid agreement. So the Sheriff's Office has mutual aid agreements with the city and the university as well, I believe. Uh, what other agencies APD has um, uh, Mutual aid agreements with I, I I couldn't speak to I don't know Mayor if you're able to answer that or not. Uh, I'm aware of, of what you just explained. Certainly, the mutual aid between Ohio University and uh, and Athens Police Department, and then with the Sheriff's Department. Uh, I'm not 100% sure as to whether there's anything as it applies to State Highway Patrol. Um, 
nor do I know if there's any mutual aid between Athens and any of the other municipalities, i.e. Nelsonville or with Hawking College. Thanks for your question, Ellie. Other questions or comments? Looks like Ellie had a follow-up question asking how she could find out about those mutual aid agreements. Um, uh, I mean, mutual aid agreements for a matter of public records. So um, I think making a public records request, and I, and I would defer to the mayor as to who in the city would handle those kind of public records requests could probably, certainly that would work for my agency. If somebody asked for a copy of all of our mutual aid agreements, we'd be able to produce those. And for the city, it would be directly to the Athens Police Department um, acting police chief, Captain Ralph Harvey. Great. Other comments or questions? Okay, okay, hearing none, uh, I think that brings our meeting to a close. Um, I appreciate everybody's time tonight and appreciate uh, you all being with us. Hey, Chad, before you close, um, can we clarify the next meeting? Um, I think our regular meeting schedule is uh, the first Thursday of every month, but not during the summer. So um, I don't know. It, it, if, if I missed it and we already have one on the books, I apologize, but could, could you maybe just uh, address that? Um, we don't currently have one on the books. Thanks for raising that question, uh, Chief. We don't have one on the books. Uh, typically it's the first Thursday, as you mentioned, that first Thursday would be July 2nd, but I think in for many people, July 3rd is a holiday. The fourth is a holiday um, that's moved to the third. So if we did a July meeting, if people want to do a July meeting, we could do it on the 9th. I would advocate that we move the next meeting to August. But if people want to meet in July, that could be a possibility. Do people want to meet in July? There, um, I think maybe for me, at least, and I know folks in my um, area, people are kind of solidifying if they're taking vacations or if there's situations happening where they're not going to, like, there's a lot of things happening right now. I would move for August if possible. August would work better for me for what it's worth. We're moving the police department in July and um, that's going to be quite a challenge. So I played full for a little bit. Where, where are you guys moving to? Uh, building 13 up at the ridges. So um, the first floor just to the left of the Kennedy Museum as you look at the front of the building. Sarah, you were going to say something. Yeah, just um, sorry if I missed it, but do we have a, a date for a fall, um, like the, the barbecue? Um, because we'd want to get that into council for street closures um, okay. early early in August. Um, since it, it hasn't come so far, that would need to go to streets committee. I think it is. I'll check my email, but I missed, there was an email I missed. September 16th. Sorry? September 16th is the, that's what I have on my calendar that we had reserved that date. And the 17th is the rain date the following day. Um, I think something went to Ralph and Andrew Chicky. And Ralph, as I recall, said he was good. I think Kaiser's is closed, so we're going to have to look for another, another vendor to supply food. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate. They were. I know. They were good. Okay, so to sum up, we'll look for a meeting on Thursday, August 6th at 5.30. Normally we meet at 5. Do we want to change to 5.30? Uh, 
Um, we, I moved, I suggested this meeting go to five thirty because there was a request to have the public be of it be more accessible to the public. Um, I, I don't. Okay. So five, five thirty, August 6th. Brenda Moran, I would like a July JPEG meeting. Okay. It it looks like one person want wants a July meeting. Should we vote? I suppose. I just noticed in the chat, pe people have been chatting. Who is who is Brendan? I don't even hit. That's not a person that's on the roster for JPEG. Yeah. Brenda, I appreciate your comment. Uh, I believe we'll have our next meeting on August 6th. 5.30 or 5. People have a difference. Can we just do 5? That's when we normally meet during the school year, but. Oh, I see Maria's point about barbecue and COVID. So the barbecue will be tentative at huh. the very, at the, yes. That's right. By a strong word. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks everybody. I appreciate your time tonight and we'll see you again uh, in August. Wait, did we decide five or five thirty? I'm sorry, Chad. Did we we decided five? Okay. Allie, were you putting five o'clock up or did you have a question? I think I was about to wave goodbye. Okay. Very good. Even better. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Take Thanks. care. Bye bye.